Hey plant gang, I'm so excited to hear to talk to you about this plant which is literally buzzing around me with bees, uh, honeybees, all sorts of crazy stuff. This is Echinacea purpurea, Echinacea purpurea or purple coneflower. Well you say to yourself, well these, all, these aren't all purple. Uh, well our native purple coneflower is in fact purple. The ones that are in front of me are the result of hybridization uh, with other native coneflowers that bring in this variety of color. Echinacea purpurea really is towards the top of most popular landscape sun perennials. And you can see why. Here we are, uh, end of June, high summer, Echinacea purpurea blooming its head off in all of its different uh, colors and textures here in the landscape. And I'm going to tell you, as I've watched people in the UT Gardens, the State Botanical Garden, uh, interact with this area, they are blown away uh, by this purple coneflower. And so this is a great plant to add to your home landscape, in particular in a full sun situation. Now there's a lot of different cultivars. There's one called Kim's Knee High, which is a very short one. But just our standard uh, coneflowers, two to four foot high, spreading out two to fo two foot wide. Now, when you encounter this in what we'll call a prairie situation in the wild, uh, you're going to encounter the one that I had in my hand, the purple coneflower, the, the one almost a mauve pink uh, color to it, hardy for, from zones three through eight, so used through a variety of parts of the country. Uh, one disease problem that coneflower has is called Aster's yellow, and that impacts the the bloom, it makes it look a little bit contorted, and so you want to look out from that. In particular, when you're purchasing purple coneflower, you wouldn't want to bring that disease into your home landscape. Here's a landscape tip. Attractive, trouble-free plant, good for perennial borders, naturalized settings, cut flower production, and medicinal gardens.